Hello and welcome to a new video about Prometics. This time we're going to talk about plans, uh, schematics. Uh. Remember when we draw this uh, structure, the structure of a Prometic plan? Well, if you're planning a Prometic system, you for sure not draw it like this. Uh. So, as usual, we are using in schematics. Uh, we are using there some sort of of symbols, simply lines, symbols, to symbolize how it is working, without going into too much constructive details. We just want to show the function. So there is a a pneumatic scheme, schematics. Pneumatic schematics, yeah? pneumatic connection plan, something like this. Yeah? I show you now a pretty, pretty uh, simple example. Yeah? So I'm already using symbols. Yeah? I think you can guess what the symbols are, but we are learning them afterwards in different videos. Okay, so. Here we have one symbol that, for instance, is the symbol of a so-called double-acting cylinder. Okay. Might be one symbol. Then there is a counter element below, switching element. Might look like this. The symbol then we have connections between the elements which are just lines then we do have some names simply yeah like I said I'm going to explain what this symbol here means yeah. might be other symbol as well I don't know. Something like, you know, there are different, different symbols simply used. I will stop now drawing. Huh? This is the last thing I'm going to draw. Even it does not really make sense what I draw here because here something is missing and then pa 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 pa. So we are using simply symbols. Huh? Uh, using simply symbols and the combination of the symbols they show how those is working for the persons who can read it okay right now we cannot yeah? there might be limit switches here or something like this the important thing or one important thing of course is that we can identify those parts yeah so since it's only symbols, we are, you see, those symbols are pretty much equal to look the same. Yeah? Maybe 
surroundings here a little bit different, but there is a spring, there's also a spring, it's mm, all the symbols. So we need to identify those things. And if we need to identify things, we usually call it a name. Okay? If I want to identify a specific person, I call the person's name. Huh? Naming things. I guess it's a understandable and usual concept. Okay? So how we are naming those things? Yeah? We could name this Carl. Yeah? This is a Linda Carl and that's the Val Franz. Yeah? Of course we are not doing that. Yeah? We want to give names which do already have a certain structure. Okay? That we can already determine from the name what is the purpose of this thing, to identify a little bit more. Yeah? So there are standards for this. One standard is for insta uh, instance the European standard EN 81346. Yeah? There's a part one and a part two and so on. Yeah? And this shows how we shall name things. Yeah? There are several it there are possible aspects yeah, under which we can name them. Yeah? So there is the aspect of function. Yeah? If we want to, to name them according to function, yeah? oh, this is a valve, this is this, this is this, then the prefix of the names is this equal sign. This is a function aspect. Okay. What is the function of this part? This shall limit this and that, yeah? for instance. Yeah? Then there is the, the product aspect. This is usually started with a minus sign. Product. Product aspect. And then there's also the location aspect. Okay? If I want to have coded in my name where this thing is used in my whole system, if there's a big plant or something like this, yeah, it might be interesting that you know, okay, this is a part which belongs to the, I don't know, heating system of this and that, yeah? or the governing system of the turbine, or whatever. Yeah? So this is the location. Aspect. Location aspect. Usually start with a plus. Yeah? We will now start to use the product aspect. So all our names, I'm just now drawing, they are starting with a minus sign. Yeah? This is why I call this now MM1. That's a strange name, right? And this here I call BG1 and this here I call BG2. Those two limit switches. This here I call QM1. Yeah? This here I call KH2, uh, maybe there are other ones. This here I call SJ2, uh, this here I call BG whatever. Uh, shall it be? Shall it be one? Then it's not operating at all. Doesn't really matter. So I give those names. And you see those names usually consist of some letters uh, and a number. So what are the letters? The letters give an idea what is this. Yeah? So there are working elements, for instance. Working elements. These are starting with the letter M. This is why this working element, this cylinder, is called minus product M. Working element. Working elements are starting with M. Then there are switching elements. These are the Qs. The Qs, they are really switching the energy to the working element. They are switching. Okay? Then there are control elements. Those control elements, they do not really switch the energy. They are, sw they are just switching information. Yeah, informational content, these are the K's. Okay. 
Then there are, for instance, displays, display elements like lights or, or displays or something like this. These are the P's. Uh, and then there are hand operated things, elements. These are the S's, the switches, D for instance, S. Yeah. So there is a main letter. There are more. I will simply pop, 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 pop. There are more. I will attach a file under this video you can download where you can see, have an overview. You don't need it from the top of your head. You should know the structure. Yeah? So minus product aspect, first letter showing what element this is. Now, what is the second letter? The second element, the second letter, shows a little bit further what it is. For instance, this BG here, this BG is a limit switch. Second G, limit switch. There would also, for instance, be a BP. That's a pressure switch. Or there would be a BF, it's a flow switch flow sensor. Okay. So there the second letter shows a little bit more in details. Yeah? So for instance here, MM, that's a hydraulic cylinder. Yeah? There is a pressure switch. Flow switch. MM, hydraulic cylinder. Electrical motor for instance, MA. Yeah? See? It's a working element, M, and A, this is electrical motor. Or here, KH, yeah? flow control valve, yeah? KF, electrical control, a relay, something like this. Yeah? We will hear in a different set of videos about those things. Yeah. So the, the, the second, the second uh, letters are somehow detailing. You know, is it a fluid technique? Is it electrical technique? Is it what is it in more detail? It's not just a working element. It's an electrical motor. It's not just a working element. It's a cylinder. Okay. So these is how we name things and also the structure again the structure of a hydraulic system in the plants from pressure generation energy energy uh, generation part yeah to input part to control part to switching part to working part from top to down uh, from from <laughs> from bottom to up yeah like air would simply uh, go up. Uh, air is rising. Yeah. Energy and here energy generation is at the bottom and energy usage is at the top and in between we have the typical structure like we already discussed. Yeah. Input, process, output. Okay. So this is how such plans look like. In the next few videos, in the next few videos, we are going to talk about now all those parts in this order. Yeah? Next time we are going to start about uh, the compressors, energy, energy producing things. Yeah? We'll start with compressors and then we are working and then we are getting Step by step, we will learn what's behind those symbols. Yeah? And then in the end, we shall be able to produce a better plan than this, because this here right now would mean it will never, it will never move this cylinder. <laughs> Things happen, you know. Thank you very much for your attention. Attention. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. See you next time. Goodbye.